This is subscription drop 5 of Thinking Particles. In this feature video, we will talk about the enhancements we did to Volume Breaker. We have added a new functionality to Volume Breaker, and that is clustering. Now fragments can be clustered into bigger fragments. And there's a lot of controls in Thinking Particles that allow you to define how clustering of fragments should happen or take place. Let's have a look at the scene. In this scene is a pretty simple setup. We bring in the plane, then we feed in the plane into Volume Breaker and Volume Breaker breaks the plane apart. So we get these little chunks or fragments. A great feature we have added as well into Volume Breaker is how to work and handle clustering. The clustering rollout takes care of all clustering functions and as you can see there are several options, several ways to control it. Volume Breaker also has seen some enhancements, new functionalities, but for now let's concentrate on the clustering. We have a visualization feature where you can actually display your fragments and clusters. Fragments are shown in darker saturated colors and clusters will be shown in lighter desaturated colors. So now you see all the connected chunks or the connected fragments become one cluster. And in this scene it is uh, especially interesting because in this scene we use a function called from activation. That is dynamic clustering. We create the clusters on the fly based on, in this case, on our impacting object, which is the helper object. You control the cluster size with a simple uh, spinner and there you can set your size of the clustering. Let me do one big cluster or bigger clusters and you see now we get bigger, more connected chunks of volume breaker fragments. This is one way to control it. So that's right from the impact point based on our impact point with a helper object. That's one way to control the clustering. Here we use the standard volume breaker feature of uh, uh, crack spreading. And here is another feature how to control the clustering. We use a texture map. So texture maps can define our clusters. This is the same plane like before, but right now we use the tilt map feature in Volume Breaker to define our clustering. Let me just bring up uh, the menu and let's have a look at how this is controlled. The clustering is using a special feature here. Um, we are pre-clustering right now in this case because we want to create our look of the clusters. So we want to define and then break it apart. And we are using, as I said, the tilt map feature. The tilt map feature uses the standard texture map. So let's have a look at the texture map. We are using a gradient ramp. You can use any kind of texture. So you can see here, have a look at the gradient ramp. It goes from black to white. Standard setting, nothing special, nothing fancy in here. So that gives us the clustering as we see it here. Now the threshold defines how our clusters are created. So this works more like a bump map. So we're looking for the change in intensity in the texture map. And whenever the change is bigger than this threshold, we create a cluster. So this allows you to create all kinds of variations of the same texture map. And the smaller this value, the more clusters we will get and the more steps we will catch in the texture map. So here we have a very fine uh, differentiation of the uh, intensity values, so we get a lot of clusters. So controlling clusters with a texture map is a really powerful feature, but there's more. We have one more option to control clustering in Volume Breaker. So what you see here is a point cloud and we place the point cloud in the center of our plane and now the point cloud defines the clustering. This might sound strange at first, 
but it's very powerful. It's really a unique feature and a great uh, feature as well because now a different object can control your clustering. So you can animate this object or do whatever you want to this object and it will affect your clustering. Let's have a look how we did the setup. So we bring in the plane as usual, we cluster the uh, volume break the plane and then we have our surface position and the position born. So what we do is we create particles on the surface of the torus object. This will act as our, our cluster cloud. And in Volume Breaker, we just go down to the clustering. And at the very end, we have our cluster cloud controls. The cluster cloud controls allow you to use particles to define the clustering. And you can pick whatever particle group you want. And you define the distance to these vertices or particles in this case and uh, they will start affecting the clustering. So let's turn off the torus for a moment and see how this looks like. The option Merge Overlapped is very important and helpful so right now we have clustering happening just where the uh, vertices or our particles are. And with merge overlapped, all touching uh, fragments will or touching clusters will become one big cluster. So that's a really powerful and nice feature and you can turn it on and off and it is very fast and um, it shows you in the viewport how it is clustering the fragments. Also, because this is based on an external object, you can change the object, you can animate the object, you can do all kinds of modifications to the object alone, and it will affect the clustering of your broken object. This is also a very powerful feature because now you created all the fragments in your object, so you have your minimum size of fragments, and now after the fact, when it's all fragmented, you still can control the clustering. So you can sculpt your, your fragments in, in a way that is very powerful and is really flexible. The same goes for, uh, because we did the volume position, uh, the same goes for segments. We can reduce the amount of particles we use in an instant just by changing the original uh, geometry. So these were all the uh, features and functions we have to control clusters. Check out our other videos as well.